Maybe last summer when they started talking about defunding the police. What happened? <laughs> Crime went crazy. We had a 29% increase in murders in the United States in one year. That's a record. 29% increase in murders in one year. Uh, Portland, 800% yeah. increase yeah, in exactly. the course of nine months. Exactly. Months. So, no, I don't want to. Yeah, because that the questions will take too much time. No, I'm just telling you. I know there's a lot of time. All right. So, because I got a lot of points coming up here. So when you, if you were to get rid of the prisons, okay, if you were to get rid of the justice system, sin would run rampant, crime would run amok. <coughs> it was a example of that Proposition 91 in Alaska. It passed it a few years ago, and it, it basically one of the provisions of it was that. If you stole uh, less than fifteen hundred dollars worth of stuff out of the store, they wouldn't even prosecute it. People were running out of loans with basketfuls of stuff, just bolting, walking out, taking. Oh, this is going to be less than fifteen hundred. Let's just go outside with it. And if it, and people were going nuts. Business owners were threatening to shoot people. And I'm not, and this is something I heard myself in city council meetings. They got up there in front of city council and said, "You don't do something about this, we're going to start capping." People are going to get shot because it's your fault. I mean, they were threatening this publicly in front of the city council. They were so upset. That's what happens when you get rid of law and order. Chaos ensues. Okay? Uh -huh. Keep that in mind. I told you, sorry, my phone keeps going to All right, when you stop preaching about hell, many Christians who grow up in the church start disbelieving in its existence or to begin to downplay its horrors. You see, when you stop teaching about hell, you lose the fear of God. <laughs> because hell is the reason for the fear of God. That's what right. Jesus said in that scripture. So it stands to reason that when you stop believing in hell, or you stop believing in the severity of hell, oh, it's only 300 years. Oh, it's total annihilation. It's not really eternal torment. There's not really fire. No, it's the grave. And by the way, if they say it's the grave, here's the argument, Matthew 25, 41, says that they will be cast into eternal, uh, everlasting fire that was created for the devil and his angels. The next time somebody says, oh, no, it's the grave. Really? Where's the devil's grave? Yeah. Yeah. The devil hasn't died. Neither have the angels. They don't go through physical death like we do. It is not the grave. It is a spiritual place of torment where people really, and saying in that scripture, you're going to go to the same place as the devil. Yep. The devil doesn't go into a grave in the ground. There's no place. No. Nope. So anyway, when they begin to downplay this, people begin to deny its existence. They, when they start to deny its existence, or they start to downplay the severity of it, what happens next? All right? Hell is, uh, first I want to mention this, hell is just as real as heaven and serves a legitimate purpose in God's plan. And when the church neglects to teach this, then the harshness of hell becomes an excuse to dismiss its existence altogether. Mm -hmm. And Christians then either totally discard the existence of hell or start minimizing its impacts on sinners. That's the, that's the effect. When you get rid of hell or you, get, or you turn down the heat of hell, then you turn down the wrath of God and you must lose the fear of God. That's the natural response. Yeah. So what happens next? Well, you get lost, right? Isn't that what we just said? Lawlessness. When the church starts doubting the existence of severe in hell because the church ignores teaching about it, then it ceases to be a deterrent to sin, and sin loses its exceeding sinfulness in the minds of believers. Talking about the church now. In the minds of believers, as the scripture <clears throat> described, when this occurs, then the temptations to sin gain additional power over the Christian church, and sin begins to grow within the congregation. When hell is not so hot, sin is not so ugly. There you go. Just like when Eve started to discount, oh, you're not going to surely die. She believed that, then suddenly the temptation was attracted. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the consequences were not so bad, the sin didn't look so ugly. It became more attractive in their eyes. That's what happens. And sin begins to grow in the church. Hell loses its heat. Sin loses its ugliness. It becomes more appealing. 
Resistance to it then becomes less important in the church. This is exactly what's happened in the modern American Christian church. Sin has exploded exponentially in proportion to the decline behind the pulpits mm -hmm. and the teachings of the doctrine of hell. Mm -hmm. Sin mm -hmm. abounds, but the consequences for sin seem absent or minimized. There you go. When you minimize sin, by minimizing the consequences of sin, sin abounds. Mm -hmm. And what happened when Jesus said that? Jesus said, because sin would abound, the love of most would wax cold. So the love of many start waxing cold. Why do you think we're seeing this out on the streets? Nobody's got respect for street preachers. Yeah. When I was a kid, if you were in a restaurant and somebody says the F bomb, and there was a bunch of women and kids in there, you heard about five or six bullets, clink, hit the plate all at once. And big burly men would get up and walk over to your table and say, excuse me, there are women and children in this room, and you say that again, we're gonna take you outside and teach you some manners. They said, boy, was the south. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. And they go back and sit down. You better not say it again. Today, children are saying it oh, again. Right. Women are out there teaching their children to cuss. Yeah. Yeah. They're out there saying all kinds of filthy things. We see it all the time. Women are out there. We have 10-year-olds look us off and call us bad names. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because mm -hmm. sin abounds. Because hell is not so hot. Yep. When you get rid of the doctrine of hell out of the church, then the consequences for sin do not seem so bad, and sin explodes within the church. And the church is the moral conscience of this nation, and when the moral conscience is silenced, when we're committing the sin of silence, yeah. then we're not doing our job, That's and right. the culture gets worse. It's a catastrophe. Right. It's a catastrophe. That's what starts happening. That's right. Very true. But it goes beyond that. Mm. When sin then abounds, the excuses and false doctrines giving spiritual cover to excuses for sin thus abound as well. You see, when you when you're <coughs> in a church and you're living outside of wedlock, you know this church I told you I got saved at, 40% of all your couples in that church were living together outside of wedlock. And there was no conviction in there in that church that made them feel uncomfortable about that. Oh no, 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 we can't make them feel uncomfortable. They might run out the door and take their tithes with them. Yeah, yeah. Because they're more interested in bucks and beans and money in the plate than they are yeah. Yeah. Uh, They're more interested in their business. What folks, the church is not a business, it's a body. Yes. So when that body becomes a business, it's a whore. Yeah. Right. Because you sell it out, you sold out to the world. Yeah. The church has become a whore. In the American culture. Amen. You're yeah. a whore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Practicing whore. That's right. When sin abounds, excesses and false doctrines giving spiritual cover abound as well. False doctrines like, we all sing every day. You ever heard that one? No. You're yeah. not yeah. supposed to judge. Heard that one on the left. This oh, is exactly how we get to this point with an act. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Oh, you're embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Call myself a Christian because of folks like you. Right. You know, how dare you judge? Jesus is love. Yeah. You see, when the wrath of God is absent, what all that's left yeah. is greasy grace. That's yeah. good. Right? Well, yeah. That's all that's left. <laughs> and that's why they believe that. Because the wrath of God is gone, because hell is done away with. There you go. When you're not teaching about it, they're not learning about it. If they don't learn about it, they don't believe it. The Bible says, how will they hear without a preacher? Well, how are they going to believe hell without the preachers teaching about it? Right. The there you go. Right. How are they going to believe it if we don't teach? Uh -huh. We must be teaching the doctrines of hell. Uh -huh. We must be teaching the consequences for sin. Yeah. Otherwise, sin explodes in the church. And if the church goes down the tube, the culture has already gone to hell. Yeah. Yeah. Doctors like we all sin every day and all these kinds of things start gaining great favor as sin continues to lose its ugliness because the consequences, consequences for sin seem less horrific. <laughs> sin becomes part of the life of the average Christian instead of holiness being that norm. Right. Uh, That's what's happening. Sin it becomes a normal part of the Christian life. And you start saying, well, we all sin every day. Nope. Look, folks, 
Jesus never sinned, the devil always sins. If you sin every day, which one does it sound like you really follow? It sounds like you're following the devil. It doesn't sound like you're following Jesus Christ. Jesus never sinned. That's the example. But when you stop teaching about the consequences of sin, sin explodes. And then they start uh -huh. coming up with these false doctrines to justify their sin. Uh -huh. And these are the things we're hearing on the streets. That's why we're hearing it. Instead of holiness being that norm, the overall health of the church is in decline. Mm -hmm. The overall health of the American Christian church is in decline. Absolutely. Now it goes further. When hell stops being so hot in the minds of Christians, then repentance stops being emphasized for salvation. Does that surprise anybody? Because hell, hell is not so hot. Why emphasize repentance? Why talk about repentance when, you, when hell is not that bad? Right. Why do we need to repent from sin? Sin is, which we do it every day. It's just something we're, I'm just human. I can't help myself. Why worry about repentance? Why teach repentance? You, do they ever teach repentance by the pulpit? Rarely. Rarely ever. I mean, if sin is not that bad, why repent from it? Because hell's not that hot, right? right. Mm. That's what happens. Step by step. When we're following, we're following the steps of how this happens. Okay? Repentance stops being emphasized for salvation. Repentance is a key component of salvation, but if sin is not so sinful because hell is not so hot, then repentance loses its importance in the average Christian's eyes. This gives birth to easy believism. Right. That's exactly what we have today is easy believism. Yeah. Jesus <coughs> in uh, Luke, 20, uh, Luke 24, 46, and 47, this is just where Christ died, rise again on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name of all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Well, if you're not preaching repentance, you're just preaching remission of sins, right? Yes. Oh, just believe in Jesus. Just believe in Jesus. It's okay. Don't worry about repenting. Just believe in Jesus. And now it's even gone so far whacked out that some denominations, or some people, not all denominations teach this, okay? I'm not picking on any denomination. I'm just saying that some people actually say, oh, repentance is works. You can't, repentance is what works. You, you can't believe in works-based salvation. No, don't believe in repentance. Just believe in easy believism. That's where the breezy grace comes from. Yeah. That's where it comes from. Yep. You take away the wrath of God, all that's left is the other. That's why God, Jesus, is love. And how dare you talk about judgment? Judgment has to do with wrath. Judgment has to do with hell. Judgment has to do with what they perceive as something bad. As I said before in my other message, hell is not a bad place for Christians. It's a bad place for sinners. Yeah. It's a good place for us because... It takes sinners and takes them away from us. It keeps them, it keeps death from coming into heaven the way it came into the world through sin. God cannot allow sin in heaven because death is coming to heaven through sin as well. And that's a place of eternal life. Hell is a place of eternal death. Yeah. And that word, by the way, eternal death is past is present tense. It is exactly what everybody fears. It's the process of dying that never a lot of people say, oh, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of God and death. I'm afraid of dying. I'm afraid of the pain of dying. I'm sorry, but hell is exactly that. It is the pain of eternally dying and never finishing the process. It is the absolute nightmare that most sinners fear. That's what it is. When sin doesn't seem so bad, and repentance from it doesn't seem so necessary. Number five, churches lose the urgency and fervency of evangelism. And what evangelism there is becomes reduced to Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. That's what it gets reduced to. Yeah. Because you've taken away the consequences of sin. You don't tell them what they're saved from anymore. Yeah. Why, why tell them what they're saved from? They're living hell. Well, they, they stop living in hell. It's, uh -huh. it's annihilationism. It's the grave. It, they come up with all these other excuses to get rid of it. Right. Because they're not teaching the gospel yeah. of hell. We have a responsibility as the church to teach the full counsel of God. Yeah. We have no authority to take any of it out or uh -uh. add anything to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taking the hell out of the word of God is a sin. Vendors. And those yeah. teachers that sit behind the pulpit that don't teach hell are going to answer for it. 
But you're going to answer for the sin of silence, just like you will. But we're going to judge for every idle word. You're also going to be judged for things you did not teach. Yeah. Things you did not teach. Amen. Becomes reduced to Jesus loves you as one plan for life. Easy believes that Eve is translates into worthless evangelism, devoid of cause for sinners to repent. And, uh -huh. then, and then here's the kicker. Mm. And those who do call for sinners to repent are despised among yeah. those deceived Christians and are considered hateful and judgmental. Yeah. Yep. And thus they now become a tool of the devil to stand firmly in the way of trying to get sinners to repent so they can be saved. This is exactly what's happening. The devil has taken them full circle now, taken them full circle to where they once believed in hell, that hell was hot, mm -hmm. and they're preaching fire and brimstone mm -hmm. messages. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, you don't have to preach all of hell and fire and brimstone. I believe in a balanced message, yeah. but I don't believe you should leave it out. Mm -hmm. That does a disservice to the church and ultimately to the sinner too. Mm -hmm. So fire doesn't become so hot, and then sin doesn't become so bad, and then it becomes infected in the <coughs> church, and then the church becomes an easy believism, and then they stop doing evangelism and repentance is despised. It becomes despised. And now you're a hate monger. Now you're judgmental. Now you're driving people away from Jesus. You need to preach the love of God. That's what brings people to Jesus because they're deceived. And where does that lead? I think, it leads, I think that leads to the church. It leads to Matthew 7, 26. And at that day, many will come to me and say, do we not do all these wonders in your name? And he'll say, pardon me, I never knew you. You need to practice lawlessness. It leads to Christians who sit in church all their life, believing that they're saved, living in willful, open sin, and thinking they're justified by all the false doctrines they've heard because the church doesn't teach about consequences of sin. No. And then they get to God, and they get the shock of the century, the shock of eternity, when they stand before God and he says, get away from me. I never knew you. Right. You lived in lawlessness. That is not what I've called the church to do. You're not part of my church. You're part of the devil's church. And that's, I think, exactly what, where they end up. I think that's where those people come from. They come from churches that teach it's okay to be in sin. It's okay to be gay and still be a Christian. You know, we hear that all the time. Right? Yeah. Oh, I'm gay and I'm a Christian. Well, you're one or the other, but you can't be both. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Amen. So as you can see, neglecting the doctrine of hell has a cascading effect in the church that ends up watering down church teaching, leads Christians into sin, and reduces the church's effectiveness in reaching the lost. Uh -huh. Hell is taught by God to his church, and failure to pass that teaching along to God's church will result in some teachers and preachers going to a place they refuse to discuss. Right. Yeah. But once there, there will be nothing other <coughs> than hell and its torment on their minds. Yeah. They, um, if we neglect, if we neglect to teach, this is a great responsibility to stand behind the pulpit. This is a tremendous responsibility. And I don't think very many pastors around the country are taking it as seriously as they should. They're not teaching the full counsel of God. They're teaching, they're scratching itching ears so they can make a buck. Yeah. What they're doing is all about money. A lot of it is all about money. They want bigger churches. They want bigger this, bigger that. They want more money coming in. You know, they got bigger houses, bigger cars, they yeah. five airplanes, and all this other kind of stuff. <laughs> they get rich off of this stuff. You know, I think it's okay to make a living from the gospel. The Bible says so. But it doesn't say you're supposed to make a kill. No. It says you're supposed to get rich off of it. Filthy rich. Filthy rich. Filthy rich. Filthy rich. Yeah. It doesn't say you're supposed to. So, in conclusion, I would just like to say that it's up to us those of us that are the faithful remnant to be teaching right at the pulpit and out on the streets the doctrine of hell. Yep. That is yep. our responsibility yep. Yep. as true Bible-believing Christians. That's what we must do. This is the hand we've been dealt with. This is the card we've been dealt. We don't necessarily have any control over this, but we have to deal with what we've been given. And what we've been given is a world in which there's been so much deception. Like, I've been a Christian 20 years and it's been going on for decades. Yeah. You know, yeah. it is. It's been going on for quite some time. And uh, and it's not going to be over anytime soon. 
I don't think there's going to be a revival in those churches in America because those churches in America are they're looking for revival because they're dead. Yeah. They need to be revived because they're dead. Yeah. And they're not even alive anymore. Shocking. They need right. to be brought back to life. Right. But it's our responsibility as the faithful remnant of God to go out and teach the consequence. And we don't have to ignore the mocking and the cat calls and the insults and all of that. This is a normal part of street preaching. It's a normal part of teaching the truth. And yeah. if you don't think the devil goes to church, <laughs> oh, yeah. just look at the gay pride flag flying, flying over a bunch of churches these days. The yeah. devil does go to church and he works with inside the church. But we have to be yeah. diligent about making sure that if we get behind this pulpit as a pastor, that we make sure, and I know you are, brother, you are teaching faithfully behind this behind this pulpit. That's good. And anybody that takes his place after he's gone, you need to make sure you get the full counsel of God mm -hmm. to the next meeting. Sure that you judge for the things you teach and the things you leave out. Yeah. So if you deliberately choose not to tell the truth for the sake of offending them, you care more about what they think than what God said in His Word. Yeah. Yeah. We can't have that. Well, right. 